now featuring an interview shortly before his death. BBC One pays tribute to a unique man who lived his life behind the camera. Hello, I'm Patrick Litchfield and I've been photographing the rich and the famous and the beautiful for over 40 years. Here we go, one, two, three, eyes towards each other. Three. That way a bit, both of you. There, 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 there. It was a late night shoot, wasn't it? We didn't get there until about five. And it was, and finished, finished about eight, and it was for uh, the children in need. And Patrick was very kindly donating a shoot to be put up uh, for auction. Chin down a little bit, that's good girl. Gentlemen, no, stay as you are, Jenny. that's it, you've got it. There. He was just on such great form. He was yeah, he brilliant. Just... I mean, it was a humongous, humongous yeah. shock. To go from seeing someone, who yeah, just so full of life and, and, and telling jokes, yeah. and yes. you know, and and then suddenly the next day was just um, it's just very really un. It was a big shock because uh, he wasn't ill, and anyone who dies like that is gives it just a tremendous shock. So, mind you, very Patrick that not to uh, you know take a long time to do anything. He was quick at doing everything, including dying, which is extraordinary, but that's totally in his character. There we are, lovely. OK, that's got it, definitely. <laughs> um... Patrick Litchfield is not his real name. It's a convenient fiction casually assumed when he became a photographer. His real name is Thomas Patrick John Anson, Baron Soberton, Viscount Anson, the fifth Earl of Lichfield. It's quite difficult to introduce the fact that I'm Lord Lichfield because I'm rather shy about it. So I have to say, I'm speaking for Lord Lichfield. <coughs> Do you have some theatre tickets? And then they might say yes. Yeah. I've known Patrick really all my life. He said that we met when we were in, um, in our prams together, age three. I don't remember that. What I really remember is when we met first at Harris School, aged 13. We became fast friends, and we stayed friends ever since. He was a, a keen sportsman, boxing, cricket and rugby. Well, he started photography at school. I, I remember that, that his first interest in photography was when he was 12 or 13 years old at school. I started taking photographs because my parents sent me to a boarding school and I was very homesick. And I used to photograph things I really liked at home and then take those back with me as keepsakes. And in a way, photography has always had that appeal to me because it's something tangible that okay it's two-dimensional but it gives you an idea in terms of of nostalgia uh it's a sentimental keepsake and i quite like that although at harrow patrick was developing a passion for photography his father and grandfather were very keen for him to follow family tradition and thought that a spell in the army would do the boy good so he found himself enrolled for sandhurst uh, Patrick and I first met in the army. Um, I was already in the Grand Air Guards and Patrick came from Sandhurst. He was turned up at the barracks in Tidworth, frightfully keen, sort of bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. We became friends almost immediately, if for no other reason than he had the white Austin Healy, which I could then use going to London with him, which we did practically every night. Patrick was a, a serious soldier. I mean, Sandhurst means he knew what it was all about. He was a natural leader. People followed him. He had an authority about him um, and a great warmth. So while he was quite tough, um, he was always very fair. And of course, he was a good line of chat, which never left him. I was fighting a cook. A uh, member of the catering uh, corps. Yeah, the, the, exactly. And in the one corner uh, where I was, the ringmaster shouted out, um, Lieutenant Lord Litchfield, blue corner, and, they, and everyone went, boo, and uh, which of course they, <laughs> They would, because I was an officer and worse a lord. And in the red corner, um, Corporal Harrison from the Catering Corps, and a voice from the back of the arena shouted like, go on, Harry, mash him like you does the spuds. <laughs> Which, <laughs> and, and did he? Absolutely. He, he did. He went on to become quite famous, actually. <laughs> so there were three of us, really, who did everything together. Brian Alexander, um, Patrick and I. We got a flat together in Wilton Place it was. Life in London sharing a flat with uh, Patrick and uh, Nicky Villas was great. They were still in the army for a, a certain amount of time and they would spend 
weekends in London and then have to go back to the um, barracks down in Tidworth. This high life in London was rather rudely interrupted when Patrick and Nicky Villas were posted abroad to Libya. We were in Cyrene, which is a wonderful Roman ruin, and there was a series of statues, and on one of these, the base was there, but the statue was missing. So I said to Patrick, get your kid off and get up there and we'll take a picture. He gets up there. We then give the film to Wallace Heaton, who were very sort of snotty Bond Street, old-fashioned camera place, and they returned that saying, we can't print this because it's, um, we're not allowed to print nudity. Um, and we know it's a human figure, because they saw the other figures, because he's wearing an army wristwatch. <laughs> At the tender age of 21, Patrick inherited his title and the family estate, Shagbra, following the unexpected death within two years of his father and grandfather. Patrick always had an interest in, in photography, and he, um, I suppose when we were on manoeuvres or those sort of things, he didn't, but always in the flat, and actually in the barracks at Tidworth, he used to take photographs of us or anybody else, sort of after one of those mess dinners. And I can remember sort of holding these huge photographs in a bathtub to sort of swill the well, developer, I suppose it would be. So that, that was always sort of running through, and particularly when he met these photographers in, in Wilton Place. The tension between his assumed responsibilities as an aristocrat and his desire to prove himself as a photographer now began in earnest. And Patrick resigned his commission and started his professional life as a photographer, um, joining a studio of a man called Dimitri Castorine and Michael Wallace, which was at the bottom of the, of the block of flats where we lived, so he just went down, down the stairs to work. It's October the 14th, 1962, at 2.30. It's the moment I walked out of Wellington Barracks. <laughs> I went to become an assistant. Ten minutes later, I walked from uh, Wellington Barracks to Wilton Place, and I took off my uniform and put on some jeans, and that was it. And I've regretted that move ever since. <laughs> Patrick's mother hated the idea of him becoming a professional photographer. She regarded it as worse than interior design and only marginally better than hairdressing. Her punishment was severe. His allowance was cut. But Patrick had a stubborn streak. He swapped his beloved sports car for a bike and like aspiring photographers the world over, he turned to weddings, christenings and family portraits to earn his bread and butter. It was these photos of children that provided Patrick's first big career break when he came to the attention of old Etonian and publisher Jocelyn Stevens. I bought